Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. So today we're going to be reacting with Farouk Julius. Guys, today we're going to be reacting to a young black African act Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Why do why did God create black Africans to suffer? Wow. Oh wow. <laughs> what do you think of this? <laughs> oh, first off, God can never create anyone to actually suffer. That's not possible. God, you are God's creations. Obviously, there are people that will be more elevated than the others. Yeah. But I don't think that mindset that God created us to suffer is actually the right way to actually put it. Yeah. I'm for the motion. Yeah. The second question is that. Your second question. A little louder, A little louder. The second question is that. Why are we, we, we hear that and the Bible tell us that God created a man. And so all the, we have a different, different nation here, population here. So now, why did God allow allow blacks to, 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 to be suffer? Yes. Now I will explain that. I will explain that. You see, go, it's, the creation is a creation of God. But mankind, he creates his own standards of judging. Like for example, we are told by certain groups of churches that the black people of the earth are the children of Ham. You see, Noah, Noah, you heard the name Noah, after the flood, in the Genesis chapter 9 you read, Noah, after the flood, him and his three sons, Sam, Ham and Japheth, they started growing grapes. And from the fruit of the vine, they fermented the wine. And Noah drank too much. And he was lying naked. I'm reading this from the book of Genesis, chapter 9. And out of his three sons, Sam, Ham, and Japheth, Ham, Ham saw his father's nakedness. He was sprawled out on the ground naked. And it was a big joke for him. So he laughed. Who laughed? Ham. You know how you spell ham? H-A-M, ham. Ham. H-A-M, ham, you also spell for that piece of pig. See? You know the Englishman, he loves ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. How do you spell ham? <laughs> That's right. So this person's name was Ham, one of the sons of Noah. His name was Ham. And he saw his father's nakedness and he laughed. Big joke. The other two sons, they felt remorse, ashamed of the father's condition. So they took a piece of cloth and they walked backwards and they covered up the father. The father in the meantime, he knew what was going on, but he was too dead drunk to do anything about it. But when he came into to his senses, he began to curse. And you remember the curse? He said, curse be Canaan for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. You attend Bible class, don't you? You remember this? Curse be Canaan, for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. So they tell us in a system, they say that we black peoples of the earth are the children of Ham. That fellow who behaved like a pig, laughed at his father's nakedness. So as such, we are to become the hewers of wood and the drawers of water. So they want to see to it that you, you keep to your role. Your role is sweep the streets, carry the rubbish bin, work in the factories, whatever. This is your menial labor, that is your destiny. Now, this is the invention of man. See, man's own invention. God didn't make you so. He, as we are told, that he made us in his image. He made everybody upright. He says, he the Lord had made man upright. Upright means straight, going straight. So. The invention of man, the devilishness in man, is finding excuses to how I can discriminate against you, create theories, weave stories, fairy tales, and around these fairy tales, I find justification for keeping you down. Now, the Holy Quran, this book of God, the Quran, our religious book, it gives us an explanation of the theory of race. And I would like you to judge whether it answers the problems of mankind or not. It says, and I'm quoting in Arabic, the original, and I give you the translation. It says, Ya Yohannas, say, O mankind, the whole of mankind, whether Africans, Indian, Chinese, Eskimo, everybody. Ya Yohannas, O mankind, inna khalaknakum min dhakarim wa unsa. It is we, God Almighty says, we who have created the male and the female. 
They have created you all of a single pair, a male and a female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ And it is we who have made you into nations and tribes. What for? To discriminate against one another? No. It's the لِتَعَارَفُ That you may recognize one another. This Mr. John is a Zulu. That Mr. John is a Kaza. That Mr. John is a Swazi. That Mr. John is an Englishman. That Mr. John is a Frenchman. That Mr. John is a German. For the purpose of recognition, he has made you into nations and tribes. But since man has a sickness of wanting to discriminate on false premises, so God Almighty gives us the standard. We all have a tendency to behave like that. All. There is no exception. There is no nation on earth who is an exception to this rule. That everybody wants to create standards of judging other people as inferior to themselves. You said the African just now. And I accept that the African is, in the South African context, he is at the lowest rung of the ladder. Economically, educationally, in the professions, he is at the bottom rung. That's we have to agree. But now, among the Africans, we have Zulu. I was questioning the students. I said, are you all Zulus? The majority way. Some said, no. She is a Khaza. Somebody says something, Chwana. But now, the majority of the people that are here in this institute are Zulus. Am I right? Yes. Right. Now ask the Zulu. Ask the Zulu, what is Zulu? Is Zulu. What does it mean? Is Zulu. The heavens. No? Is Zulu. You are the heavenly people. Is Zulu. Hmm? <laughs> yes, that's in your mind. In Zulu, we are the topmost people. Among the Africans, who is the greatest tribe, the warrior nation, the topmost nation? Your title, the name, your name of your, your race is also Izu, Zulu. Agunjalo? Zulu. And what about the others? What do the Zulu say? Isilwane. <coughs> Am I right? What does he say about the others? The Khaza? The Swazi, the Chwana, what are they? Isilwane. No, this is the nature of man. Everybody. The Arab said, he said, I'm the Arab, means we are the eloquent people, and the rest of the world is ajam, meaning dumb. The Jew said, we are the children of God, and the rest of them are Gentiles. You know? Jews and Gentiles. What is Gentile? Means unclean, filthy, dirty people. All the rest of the world, uncircumcised. Filthy, dirty people. This is the nature of man. Every human being on earth, whether he's an Indian, whether he's a European, whether he's an Englishman, he feels better than the German. The German feels he's better than the French, and the French feels he's better than the Italian. So this is the nature of man. So God Almighty, God Almighty, he gives us a standard. See, since man has the sickness of creating false standards for himself, this creator, God himself, he gives us a standard of judging between people. And the judgment is, it says, inna akramakum in atkakum. So most certainly, the noblest in the sight of God is he who is the best in conduct. Not good or bad, not rich or poor, not black or white, but the best in conduct. If your behavior is better for mankind than mine, you are a better person. If my behavior is better than yours for mankind, then I'm a better person. It has got nothing to do with your race, your language, your color, or your riches. This is the standard as given by God Almighty in the Holy Quran, standard of judging between one and another. Your behavior, your conduct, your good behavior. Any other question? Hmm. I, I love the way he answers the questions. Yes, like yes, it, yes. it's beautiful. You can yeah. tell him like everyone is no one is superior to the other. Exactly. We are just equal. We coexist. What do you think about this? Well, first off, like you said, the way you answered the question was very nice. He he tried to answer the question in such a way that he is not going to be discriminating against the Zulus because already they have the feeling that God created the blacks to suffer. So he is answering it in a way that they would see and then they will even feel bad about themselves and they even feel low, which is a very nice way to answer the question. And I really appreciate um, Sheikh Ahmed that for that. Um, what else did I notice in the video? Was the little, little Bible scriptures quoted about Noah, 
being yeah, drunk um, and then the hammer and slam. I didn't really I wasn't I didn't really know that up until today. I didn't really know that about today. So he gave me clarification on that. So that's what I think about that. What do you think about this? Oh, I didn't know how was black. Was he black? Nah, I don't think it was great though. <laughs> Why are they saying the Africans are the descendant of ham? Or is it because of the case? Well, I think maybe is is an maybe is a rumor or a myth. No, it's not about a rumor or myth. I feel first off, right from time, blacks have been stereotyped to thinking that we are the ones that are made to suffer. But then over time, looking at it, you realize that the struggles that go on in Africa is, is still the same struggle that, that goes on in other parts of yeah. the world. So that stereotype that blacks are the ones that make suffer is actually, I mean, in um, we have the likes of Ali Kodangote, who is a black man and is very successful, and a whole list of other people. So you get what I'm trying to say. The point is that that's, that whole concept of blacks being made to suffer should actually, we are the ones who will actually yeah, make it stop. Because if we actually that. follow in that direction, then the stereotype won't change. That's, that's what I think about it. Guys, please like, share, subscribe to our channel. We'll see more amazing videos with you guys. We'll see you next time, guys. Please.